Good evening from Sisure Collective Society. And we begin with the first lecture in the series with Professor Shantanu Bhomik. Briefly to introduce him, he is the head of the research and projects at School of Engineering and professor at the Department of Aerospace Engineering uh, in Amrita Bishwa Vidya Coimbatore. And he's also the adjunct professor in Center for Future Materials, University of Southern Queensland, Australia. Dr. Bhomik has been honored by a number of international and national research awards, such as Leadership and Excellence Award of UNESCO Center for Peace for delivering an invited presentation, prestigious International Scientific Exchange Research Award of Swiss National Science Foundation of Federal Government of Switzerland. He has also been awarded Acharya Prokulo Chandro Roy Research Award from the Institute of Palmocare, Kolkata, Swiss National Science Foundation of Federal Government of Switzerland also has given him a research award and many other awards from the Korean government and elsewhere. Dr. Bhomik has published over 150 research articles in various journals and presently he is engaged in developing uh, some technologies uh, in the pioneering field of uh, thermoplastic composite for space radiation shielding and spacecraft structures for long distance space applications, lightweight hybrid composite container for storage of nuclear waste, lightweight bulletproof composite, which is also referred to as the Netaji Shubhash armor, lightweight blast proof composite. Uh, which is called the Chhatrapati Shivaji Armour, recycling of plastic waste to plastic composite products for a cleaner and better India, high performance adhesive bonding for aerospace, nuclear, nuclear space and defense structural applications. Today he is going, going to talk to us about how science and technology connects with spirituality. It's a very different kind of lecture that we are going to hear from him today. And we look forward to it. We also have with us here Mr. Vivekanando Mukherjee, who is MSc in physics and is also doing research in uh, Durgapur, uh, NIIT. And he has taught in Smith. Sikkim uh, Manipal Institute of Technology for a very long time. He's also going to be here to uh, listen to the discourse and summarize the discourse at the end of the lecture. From Sizure, apart from me, we also have Shurjo Shengupto, who is also the webmaster, and he is working with HP. So with this introduction of all who, who are present on screen, uh, without much ado, we would like to begin with the lecture. So over to you, um, Professor Shantanu Bhomik. A warm welcome from Sisure Collective Society for this lecture. And we would like to hear many more in the future, I'm sure. So over to you. Namaste. So I'm uh, sharing. I think I shared my slide. So uh, I think it should just be visible. Uh, the presentation will be there will be two presentations and followed by uh, one month would be there at the end. Marvel Wonder. One of the most powerful motivations that led man towards art and science was the desire to escape the 
quotidian. Marvel at life and the world. You can see that astronaut has reached to that level in the space. They're enjoying the space and they come back in the art orbit. Let us take, for example, something as banal and known as the sun. I think every day we see that morning sunrise, evening sunset, but practically, practically when you go to the space, there is no sunrise and there is no sunset. It remains the same because the earth is rotating and therefore you see that sunrise or sunset. So it is our limitation of the vision. But the moment, the moment we reach the space, it is neither light nor darkness. The sun is a star, a million times bigger than the earth. Every second, the sun consumes 600 million tons of hydrogen. It will continue to do so for another 5 billion years before being extinguished. And the life on the earth is strongly depending on the, on the sun. If there is no sunlight, no energy, there will be no life in the earth. This is a dying star. It is located 3000 light years from us. I think the physics people understand the light year distance. A light year is about 10,000 billion kilometers. That means the star which is observing a dying star is 10,000 light years and one light year is about 10,000 billion kilometers. So it's a huge, huge, huge space and it is beyond our imagination. This nebula is millions of times bigger than our solar system. It is here that stars like our sun are born. Nebulae are the delivery words of our universe. The Orion Nebula is situated at uh, 1500 light years from us. So from the earth, we, with our open eye, we really cannot see this. This is only possible if you have a very powerful ultraviolet telescope, then only we can see this, that huge of this universe, which is there's no beginning, no end. This stellar system resembles our our solar system very much. It has about 300 billion stars like our sun. The number, just imagine, this stellar system resembles our very our system with the very much. It has about 300 billion stars like our sun. So our only one sun, we can imagine how bigger it is than the earth and in the stellar system it, it has already more than 100 billion stars like our sun in the observable universe there are at least a hundred billion stellar systems each of them have an average of 150 billion stars so i think with the intellect it is no way we can comprehend only thing, if we just think about that, in this huge, huge universe, our physical form is absolutely trivial. Absolutely trivial. Like the earth itself is a very trivial, it's a very small with the space. And then, if you see the human dimension, it's absolutely it's trivial, it's so small compared to this one. But the human intellect or the human spirit can comprehend this. This picture represents the observable universe. It's a huge ball with a diameter of 28 billion light years containing 15 trillion suns. So I think trillion, like after billion, another I think 10,000, there'll be several thousands after that. So can imagine, so a trillion is followed by 21 zeros. So there is no way 
that we even can even imagine up to that level. Now let us now pass on a microsome from the macrosome. So we have seen that a huge universe which is very difficult to comprehend but it is existing for years after years with the several several trillion trillion years. Now let us come to our everyday life with a microsome from the macrosome. So our body contains a hundred thousand billion cells. See that similarity which work together so that we can live for several decades. There are hundreds of sorts of cells, each sort having its own function, its own age and its own place in the body and which are, the, which are in constant communication with each other. So within the body also, it starts from a single cell, then it deviates, then it goes to division and ultimately it comes to thousand billions of cells and this thousand billions of cells, it, it work together and it, it survive for several years and that is our human life. Our brain is composed of 100 billion brain cells, each of which is connected to thousands of other cells. So, so in our head, there are a hundred thousands billion connections. That is to say, as many as there are stars in a thousand Milky Ways. So now you see the similarity. The Milky Way or the universe with a several, several trillions of stars and galaxies and also in the human brain, we also have billions of billions of brain cells. And therefore, if we are able to concentrate, if the brain is focused, if we concentrate, then we can find the harmony. We can find the similarity and then only we can we, we have a much higher knowledge with the with the entire universe. Certain brain cells like the Purkinje cell shown here have contracts with 25, sorry, 2050, 2, uh, 2,50,000 other cells. These Purkinje cells are important for learning automatic reflex actions like driving a car. Now you see a computer, the brain accomplishes 20 million billion calculations per second, which represents a speed that is a millions of times the speed of a computer. So marvel at this, you can see here at the perfect symmetry of a snowflake. Just see this snowflake in the beauty of the nature in the uh, Rocky Mountain or maybe in the Alps or in Himalayas. The snowflake which you see here is so symmetry also. So nature creates this automatically. Then fill ourselves or yourself with the wonder in the earth, the water, the mountain, the sky, the air. It, this not a single thing are by human creation. This all are existing and a human form. We have taken a birth in this form in the planet Earth and the other worlds. From the smallest, you can see this one to the biggest. So uh, in this planet Earth, now the population of the human population is around 7.6 billion. But if you see the other living animals, it will be several, several trillions, several, several trillions, like so many. It may be dogs, cats, rats, birds, snakes, pigeons, so many birds, so many fishes. So it's a countless and each of them individually are surviving in the planet Earth of their own. So not of this, not a single animal in this planet Earth, not a single creation, creation is depending on the human life. Now, one more thing is very important thing is that that marvel at man as an embryo, such a small, such a small when it starts the growing, then it is growing, growing, growing inside. We have the heart, lungs, brain, head, then uh, so many kidney, everything is forming automatically inside. That is the blessing from the divine. To the man, the height of his achievement. So from the embryo, when we're in the mother's womb, we do not know that one, but 
and then at the same time we go for the achievement at the highest level going to the space so <clears throat> the the pleasure of a sunset we we everyone observe and enjoy and also you also see the a showing planet on the on the universe if you have a good telescope we can see this planet rise like this at the same time with a microscope or even i would say even optical microscope if you just see a leaf just see this creativity each of these so unique now the observation of if we have made we can just see the uniqueness that each of this bonding so nicely and made the entire leaf even the broccoli also you can see the symmetry in the broccoli we can see here like each and every one is symmetry so the nature is creating this fruits for us so that we can survive so let us end with these words from a master there are times when one feels liberated from one's limits and human imperfections at such moments we see ourselves there in a little corner of our little planet our eyes fixed in wonder on the cool and yet deep beauty of, of that which is eternal that is which elusive life and death are fused together and there is no evolution no destination there is only being so there is no end no beginning which is a continuous observation by uh, the one of the greatest scientists in the world albert einstein now i am coming to my next presentation Now in planet Earth, uh, so I have briefed something about the science. Now I am mean coming to technology. The discovery of electricity in 19th century is really a blessing for the human uh, society or human civilization. Just imagine, at not even 200 years, the electricity was discovered, and this technology really has changed the the lifestyle of the human being. on the planet earth that we get uh, that when there is a sunrise sunset dark so that electricity is really helping us to have a blissful and a blissful life then discovery of aviation in 20th century is another very important very important discovery and that made the planet you know that uh, within the within the earth it is really we have a very comfortable we can go a one country to another country so easily so technology is also for the mankind for the blessing and this technology also have so many implications and applications now also discovery of telecommunication just see we are communicating each other maybe with this laptop wifi whatever because of the blessing of this telecommunication of the technology so now enter world like we can communicate each, each and every part of this in, in the planet earth but before this discovery you can see this one the beauty of nature this is rocky mountain in canada with the lakes and the water is so beauty so nobody no human being has made this uh, beauty of this nature it's it, it has been of its own own creation but as a consciousness as a conscious uh, mind we can go and we can comprehend this beauty of this nature and consequently we can think some new dimension of our own life similarly the flow of river just below the mountain you can see the beauty of the nature so that the water the mountain the blue sky the trees all are the nature's own creation and as a human life we just simply go there we see we enjoy the beauty of nature and we comprehend our own divinity once we enjoy this nature on internally and externally both this is also another very important slide the life below 
the ocean, deep ocean. Just we, if we just close our eye and imagine that life below the ocean, there are so many beautiful species inside of the ocean, so many creation under the water, so many living spaces, even more than the, uh, I would say in the, on our mainland. So below the that ocean, if you just think there's so many livings, this is our planet Earth. And practically every day, every moment, some life is coming and some life is going from the planet Earth. Every moment, it's a dynamic process. So in the planet Earth, which is just simply floating on the sky in the universe. Every second, every man, macrosecond, I would say, any, any microsecond, even nanosecond, every nanosecond that, or even picosecond, a life is coming and going. Life is coming and going. It's a constant dynamic process. It never static process. So it's a changing process. The philosophy also says changing process. And on the planet Earth, we have so many constructions, so many living things, but physically, who are existing in 2021? Will, uh, will we uh, exist in 2121 after 100 years? No. This is the reality. Physically, like in a physical form, those who are existing in 2021, a time will come in 2121. So none of us will be there on that time on the planet Earth in the physical form. So, so physical form, that means physical death is inevitable for all. Since physical body is formed with five elements and it will march with its fundamental state over a period of time. So physical death, like if we if we just if we just see from our human civilization, maybe 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 back, that okay, none of us escape that law of death, physical death. It is compulsory. So physical death is inevitable for all. Since physical form, the body is formed with five elements and it will march uh, with its fundamental state over a period of time. So conscious state within a space, within the space and time, the conscious state, like when you are awake for say six, 17 to 18 hours in a day, or some people maybe 20 hours in a day, like we do work, we give lecture, we cook our, our food, Maybe we go and play football, cricket, we sing a song, do the music, painting, drama, whatever. So it will be in the conscious state that when we belong to a space and time. So it will be if we just take the 24 hours in a day, out of that maybe 18 hours or 20 hours, I would say maximum, will be in the conscious state. But we have to sleep for 5 to 6 hours, every human being. So that 18 hours is the conscious state, then we are within the space and time. And Upanishad says that the moment we are in the space and time, then we are in the under the wrap of Maya. What's called Maya is an illusion. That means whatever we comprehend, whatever we see, it is our own dimensional thinking. And it is not it's not the not right, not wrong. It's a statement of the facts is going on, moving on, and moving on. Now, subconscious state or unconscious state, sleep or physical death, then space and time perishes. Like when we sleep. Say at night 11 o'clock if I start sleeping and if I wake up morning at 6 o'clock. So the moment I start sleeping, that moment that and when I wake up, that 5 or 6 hours, I don't understand that I am existing. But the moment I wake up, yeah, so now I am here. I am physically I am here. But the moment we sleep, we go to subconscious state or unconscious state, I would say in the deeper sleep. And we don't understand then there is no existence of any kind of a time or space and whatever the physical law, whatever the mathematical or chemist chemical law, everything, it only works during this conscious state of the mind. When you meditate, which is called super conscious state or intense meditation, then also space and time perishes. There will be no space and time if we have the very intense meditation, then what happens? There will be no existence of, let's like, suppose if you start meditation, maybe in the early morning or maybe in the evening, if, if, if anyone's time actually suits for that, the moment you sit, maybe the mind will think so many uh, like physical thing, like 
I have done this one before. Or she, say, she said something to me. I have a house. All this will be coming in the mind. But gradually, with the intense practice, it becomes zero. The moment it becomes zero, then there is no existence of space and time. So the objective of the meditation is that we are reaching to the superconscious state of the mind. When there is a no space and time, everything will be perishes. But to reach to that level, so since we are from the conscious to sub superconscious is regular practice. So if we if we try then one, otherwise in the initial stage, what will happen that we'll be thinking all three dimensional thinking like time and space or maybe that all the political activities, religious activities, then science and technology, movies, so many things will be coming in the mind. But gradually it happens, it becomes the emptiness, complete vacuum, complete zero. So intense meditation is a vibration of wave of spirit. Then with the intense meditation, what happens that when you go to the Samadhi state, the deepest meditation, then we march to the universe completely. There is then there is no physical form no mind, no intellect, everything marks to the entire universe and we are one with the universe and that is called Brahman. Upanishad says, Aham Brahmasmi. So we are one absolute infinite. We were never born and we will never die. So unification of with the infinite. So no birth, no death, a blissful state of eternity. So we are thinking that we are taking a birth and we will be dying. It's all illusion. We were never born, we'll never die. We are just only one with the universe. So it, it, it was merging to that one. We are taking a one step to other step, just changing the state one to other states only. Like with our infinite journey in the physical form on the planet Earth, we are maybe spending maybe 100 years or 90 years, 80 years, 70 years, somebody even 10 or 20 or 30, 40 years. But the physical form in the planet Earth with, with the physical birth, we are just spending maximum 100 years or maybe something like 120 years. But practically with the spirit, we are the infinite. We were never born, we never die. No question of death. So death is an illusion. We are feeling that one. So before death, we had so many, so many journeys happen. And this absolutely this called consciousness. So after that, I am coming to uh, one uh, uh, mantra, I think that will be, you'll be getting that one. So I'm just coming once again. It's wonderful to listen to you, Dr. Bonnick. Yeah, Would I you like to come No, I request all of you, uh, can you listen to this music with a close eyes? Na 
ಪಚೋಪಸ್ತಪಾರು ಚಿದಾನಂದೂಪ ಶಿವೋಹಂ ಶಿವೋಹಂ ಚಿದಾನಂದೂಪ ಶಿವೋಹಂ ಶಿವೋ ಶಿವೋಹಂ 
ओम शांति 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 Yes, I have completed my presentation and that mantra also. Thank you so much, Dr. Bhumi, for this lovely presentation. Uh, I can see one query uh, in the chat box this is from vidushi shaha and she says it is heard that yogis sadhus sanyasis lived physically for 100 to 300 years even more than that is this possible in 2021 <laughs> there are uh, there are yogis and they, because they consume very less food and uh, the the division of their uh, the blood cell body cell is relatively slow and uh, no and also like uh, they have certain way of meditation and they even maximum they can survive even 150 years but at the end the physical body will definitely will perish it may be a yogi it may be some, it may be a family person whoever it is this is the law of nature i think you are you are mute or it may be king it may be queen or minister whoever so nobody can escape death physical death okay. uh there's another question from shubhrata haldar hmm. and he asks please describe super conscious mind and unification with infinite okay i think i think it it requires uh, see that uh the super conscious mind of state like if we meditate you no know, that if once we meditate and gradually what will what will happen there will be no thought or no think thinking in the mind it will become absolutely zero okay and the moment that we attain to the vacuum of the zero then only this enter uh, that uh, i would say the that the consciousness will march to the enter universe and with the practice it is possible so i think who has asked this question i would say that difficult to give the answer practically with the word because there is no word to describe that because it's when actually when we meditate that experience we cannot even write or think or even we can we can tell somebody only thing i would i would say that in the early morning if you wake up at 4 4:30 just sit for meditation for maybe few minutes for the beginning or maybe few hours definitely you will be experiencing of your own and you know that that anand that that was once you unified with that one there is no way no word or no equation can explain that there is another question from prabhajyoti dotto he asks hmm. Hmm. can we use technology to understand the life giving substance Uh, could you kindly repeat one second the question? Can we use technology to understand the life-giving substance? Life-giving substance. Uh, I think he is asking how life coming comes into being. Is there any way to you know understand through technology how uh, life starts? Maybe maybe it's it's too futuristic. Maybe there is a there is maybe some devices may come in the future and. Uh, that can really get the image forming you know, of that how it is coming but with the experience it is definitely uh, like i think i would once again i would say this no recommend technology uh, if if we have the very intense and deep meditation definitely it is it one can realize that life is coming and going and before a bird it's i have some my, i should not say my personal experience here and it can be experience of its own but we hope in future that technology can evolve and can give this you no know, kind of an answer practically that is coming and going but it's coming and going it's very natural 
planets. So if we see from the planet Earth, every day uh, some uh, lives are going and some are every and coming. It's a, it's a dynamic process. It's never a constant process. Uh, there is another question from Bibushi again. Yeah. And uh, she asks, uh, Advaitic philosophy of the unity of the universe has mm -hmm. a close connection with modern physics. Mm -hmm. Einstein and Max Planck, has, mm -hmm. have, they have also emphasized on the whole mass blending into one. And yeah. she continues yeah. to ask, does it mean that somewhere the Western philosophy of science is indebted to Eastern uh, philosophy, mainly the Indian school of philosophy. So there are actually two questions. It is, from the it, it is, it is practically, it is very true. Uh, even I would say that uh, from the, from the uh, uh, I think that uh, from the Katopanishad and the Isopanishad, what was given in the Upanishads, maybe some several thousand, six to 8,000 years before, and Strodinja, the Nobel laureate, uh, I think, in his speech in 1940s in Cambridge, okay, and he specifically quoted the German scientist. He's a big, he's one of the world-renowned scientists. Schrodinger has said that that he is so grateful that knowledge was already existing in the Upanishad, and that he has made in the mathematical modeling, and uh, and it was a proven fact. So there is no conflict between the Western science or the Indian science or the Upanishad philosophy. Ultimately, it is only we are with the universe, with the one, with the one, and once we have the oneness, and naturally that uh, with by conscious state or subconscious, superconscious, we are mingling with that. Yes. Uh, there are no more questions in the chat box. So uh, uh, I would uh, want to ask you something. Yeah, please. Uh, just a moment. Please. Yes. Uh, this is a kind of an ongoing uh, discussion we have been having the other day. Hmm. So how would you actually uh, connect the, the concept of the wormhole and the white hole with the processes of meditation? Do they have um, any connection? Actually, see that uh, the black hole or the white hole, you say no about that one. <clears throat> in yeah. fact, in fact, that when the meditation, like if we uh, sit for say a couple of hours or one hour or two hours, there will be a time. Maybe it happens only uh, with the experience with maybe once in a one month or even once in a year even. Maybe a few seconds, a few seconds. Then even there will be there will be no uh, completely dimensionless. There is no even a black hole or even white hole. There is no time, no space existing. It's completely merged with that one. And that was no, that was very nicely explained uh, by Sri Ramakrishna. One of his quote, it was very nicely explained that uh, a <clears throat> small uh, doll of you no know, that uh, salt, that that doll actually went to measure the water of ocean, but the moment uh, he just came, that marched the ocean completely. So that is so that experience. There's no way to explain. There's another question from Oshmita Shom, mm -hmm. and she thanks you for transporting uh, all of us to a different sublime state. And she mm -hmm. asks, uh, could you talk a bit about time travel and meditation, I guess? See, time travel, uh, I think uh, there is a very important thing. And uh, it was that that lecture was given by Sami Vivekananda. In, I think it was in 1895 in London, I remember. Then Vivekananda was telling, there is a very good you know, that uh, concept, uh, like what is Maya actually? Okay. And uh, Sri Krishna and Narada, they went to for some pleasure of some places. And then Narada said, uh, <clears throat> there's uh, Sri Krishna, that Bhagavan, the God, uh, what is Maya? What is the time with the Maya? And Sri Krishna simply, simply smiled. He didn't say anything. And then what he said, there is a small river. You go to the other part of the river and bring a glass of water for me. I'm feeling very thirsty. So the moment he knocked to the other part of that river, he just knocked to a door of a house. A very beautiful woman came. Okay, And Narada completely forgot about his master, about his god or lord and uh, he was completely fall in love with that girl 
and completely occupied. Fine. And then he married their girl. They have having three uh, that uh, three children, having a house. So it everything happened like that. Okay. Then 14 years gone, and suddenly. There was a huge, you no, know, that uh, like a storm and that uh, some river flowed with a huge of water. Okay, and every everyone everyone died. His Narada's wife died, three children died. Only he survived, and he came to the other part of the river and he was crying, and he was crying like anything. I have lost everything, and then again the Lord Krishna appeared, said, "Hey, Narada, why is my water drinking water?" <laughs> I'm waiting for you since 30 minutes. Okay. Now they say 30 minutes. How come? In my life, 14 years gone. Okay. In my life, 14 years gone. And you were talking about you were talking about 30 minutes in your life. And now you see in, in, in 1903, the greatest discovery of Einstein, that relativity, is telling that if there is an object, if it moves with the speed of light, there will be no time. Time will be zero. So before what Einstein okay. said, it Einstein said, and that lecture of the Vivekananda in London, it was in 1895. So nicely said about relativity. I think Oshvita is also asking about time travel in the sense like, uh, can we go back to the past? Actually, so, and uh, uh, can we also move into the future? I mean, both uh, ways can we move? Both ways, uh, both ways. Actually, those things are has to be you know that has to experience in office phone. But definitely that if we have the intense again, see that the meditation with the universe, and we can see our back, we can see our forward. And time travel is possible. It's possible. Like from here, with the intense you know, that meditation, you can reach to US immediately. Like the phone will take maybe. A few seconds, okay. But with your mind, if it is that one, concentrate, you can reach to that one. And you can see that what is happening there. You mean to say that physically we could go? Physically, physically some, could yogis, go from... some yogis uh, we have heard, okay. And uh, means I have also experienced some yogis in Himalaya and have seen that one. Uh, it, it is possible. I, I, I'll, I'll never say it's not possible. It's possible. But the objective is that we have to you know, get to that ultimate liberation of that one. Okay, that traveling and this one ultimately, we have to understand that we are never born, we'll never die. That in this physical form, we always have the problem of you now that we feel that we will die, we have a fear, okay, we have so many all negativity. Uh, so that that we have to remove all those things from our life and we have to think that we are completely liberated and we'll be in a blissful and happy state along with the universe forever and ever. There are two more questions. Uh, yeah. This is uh, Rotun uh, Borma asking, if the uh, fitness of body is necessary for the spiritual, uh, is the fitness of the body necessary for the spiritual development of a person? Oh, yes. And a very a light question is, uh, what dimension of health is meditation? No, actually, see, uh, is he, he's a Bengali or he's a Bengali? Who asked that uh, question? No, the, second, uh, the second question is by Joy Chakraborty. Yes, sir, ah. both of them are my colleagues. Okay. See, that uh, we say that you know that uh, any disease in Bengali, you say asuk. Asuk means suk nai jahate. Okay. So, unless and un, until and unless we have a healthy, uh, healthy physical form, uh, that we will not able to get that one. But still, there are people like. Uh, there are some yogis, maybe they do not have because I have seen one one uh, saint in my life who has having you know that he's been paralyzed till uh, his neck. He even cannot move, he cannot move like a like a rubber uh, ball. But he was always happy and connecting with the divine. I had a long association with him for even uh, more than five years. And same thing we see in Stephen Hawking also having a very, I think, fragile physical form. But he was united with the universe completely. But for the commoners, I would say that we should have a very healthy and a physical form. We should eat properly, sleep properly. And also to attain that kind of a, I would say that kind of a you know, state of mind, that how we are passing this 24 hours in a day is very important. Like if we, we should not 
we should not have the temptation, jealousy, or the ego, or all those so many negativities. We have to remove all those things. Then only we can evolve to that state. And it requires a very long practice for us. So spirituality and science together, it requires a very long practice, and definitely we can attain that one. And once we understand the objective of life is that we have to that again we have to mix or mingle with the infinite at one where we came, we are mixing that one. And every other things are illusion in our life. Just temporary. We are just changing. No? Physical form is changing, mind is changing, transforming. We have lost our, I think, childhood, we have lost our youth, few of us now going to the world. Then we'll be losing our world of us, and we'll be just mingling of that one. But there is something which is never changing. Also, we are so filled from the inside. That is called Atman. We are one with that. Yes. I, I think you are muted. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now I can hear you, yes. Um, creative uh, meets, uh, there's a question. Uh, Dr. Hmm. Bormick is a great scientist with great spiritual wisdom. So can you tell us about the discussion between Shami Vivekananda and Tesla? Oh, yes. Uh, I, I I read that one in that one, and even you know that Vivekananda was so impressed with the with the work of Nikola Tesla, and that when that you know that is alternating current it came out, and Vivekananda used to read his article, and Vivekananda said to Tesla, whatever you have communicated, we have given to the earth, the planet earth, it will be remain for thousand years. So it was really a wonderful discussion with him, and also. Vivekananda also had a very good discussion with Jesse Bose. When Jesse Bose, no, when he actually he discovered the life in the, uh, in the plants and the trees, then Vivekananda said that, uh, my dear scientist, if you even go in deep, you'll be finding life in the stone also, in the mountain also, because everything is Chaitanya, that was. And you'll be wondering that uh, the Jesse Bose, no, that he personally used to go to Mayavati in Aditasram. In Himalaya, there is a place called Mayavati, Narita Adita Ashram, and Jesse Bos used to go and meditate there with that. So it's completely harmony that science and spirituality is completely harmony because ultimately we are actually going to the truth. Uh, there is a question uh, from Anup Sharma uh -huh. How do you understand the idea of past karma? mentioned mm -hmm. in several religious and spiritual texts mm -hmm. as influencing our present day world and mm -hmm. our future is it possible <laughs> no there, there is a there is of course a, a karma theory uh, but i think we should not <laughs> deep there actually and certainly certainly it is there uh, certainly it is there and but if i start talking on then it will go to another two hours so better we do not enter there but uh, you know that in this world, like I think I'm just giving some example, <clears throat> like uh, every individual we have born in this form with a physical form, maybe with our sibling. Okay. And you see that, that despite the parents has given the equal, equal opportunity uh, to all, all of his uh, sons or daughters, somebody is signing very high, somebody is not. Maybe send, spending equal amount of money or wealth for them for education of the upbringing, but somebody is highly successful and somebody is not. That means there are certain factors which is really from the past. And I am giving you one of my direct ex uh, one of my experience. One of my student just two years back, he was a BTEC gold medalist from uh, our department from the university, and he did his BTEC final year project with me. And just imagine from his final year BTEC project, it got a very uh, world class publication from the journal uh, journal publication it got from the BTEC project and with that he got a uh, his master's program he was uh, he was selected in uh, Delft University in Netherlands with a full fellowship he was about to go and he was so happy he was about to go to Delft for his master's degree and he will be signing like anything we know and uh, like he is thinking for his master's from Delft then PhD from Stanford he was having a huge dream just when he'll be going to Delft just seven days before, 
there's a road accident of his parents and his father passed away and he was the only son nobody was there to take to look after his mother so enter of his plan gone enter of his planning so he was a gold medalist topper i think he had 9.84 cgpa so something was there just 7 days before his father died in the road accident and he's enter uh, that no that higher education gone and now he is doing some family business in tirupur so sometime that definitely there is a past uh, that one and therefore we have to know that bow down to our uh, to the to the mother nature that we, we have we are blessed that we have having a human life and we should utilize that one in the positive way there is a question from vinoy prodhan yeah. and he asked will it be possible to know more about the notion of multiple universes uh, mm. does it relate to the concept of omnipresent uh, and spiritual it is it is it is it is omnipresent would you like to elaborate on that or i think i think i have given the answer on that one uh, i would say that to my all the friends and brothers and sisters that whatever you read in the modern physics Uh, prior to that even if you read the upanishads you know all the upanishads which is available in the 11 volume it will be the same with that one and ultimately we can realize this one with our with our mind that because as it there is a harmony you know that the universe also having trillions of galaxies we also have trillions of cells in the body or in the brain so if we concentrate completely and we can mingle with that one we can concentrate Uh, Anunna Mitra asks, "Can science and religion intermingle to create a greater form of humanity?" Okay. Now, first, I, I, I let me let me tell to uh, uh, Mrs. Anunna Mitra. So, so spirituality uh, and religion are different. She's a student. She's not married. She's, student, she's okay. a young yes. Anunna. So that I think one must understand that. the religion and spirituality is different okay religion based on certain dogmas certain concept and it, and it is a i think human uh, understanding but the spirituality is that actually that we are evolving and we are mingling with them there is no deviation here so definitely the good harmony complete harmony is that if we have the scientific intellect okay our scientific uh, the uh, action with the spirituality in the heart or in the action see whatever the scientific or technological innovation we do is external thing externally we are doing that one we are doing some uh, hands on work in the lab and doing this one and the spirituality that the men- mentally how we are evolving how we are controlling our mind how we are controlling our passion our emotion okay and once actually we go together with the best of the science and best of the spirituality then only it will be a, better harmony or a completeness i would say then actually we are seeing the universe externally through science and internally through spirituality and mixing together mingling together yes dr jay the many questions are coming <laughs> okay i do not know i am a scientist or i am a yogi i do not know this i am just trying this is yes i am uh, just trying my and there is a question by shubhroto haldar he asks uh, is there any spiritual existence of black hole uh actually uh, the spiritual existence of black hole i i do not have any concept but definitely uh, like as we as we read uh, in different philosophical uh, i think there was indication as given there you no know, that when something goes that it will completely attract that one it was there but ultimately you know that i would say that we should not focus much on the black hole or the white hole or this one we have to think that we are infinite and one and the moment the moment we will feel that we are infinite and one with the universe then at least as a we can evolve as a better human being for the time being and there will be no hatred no jealousy the moment we feel that we, we are one like see in this planet earth now we have say 7.6 billion population the moment we feel that we are one with the universe then there will be no tug of war or no of this so that at least we should follow in our uh, everyday life dr jayita i think again you are muted yes, i'm so sorry yeah. uh, there is a question from shonud dash 
how is it possible that a creator so full of love hmm. created a world and a nature uh, where animals can live only by killing other animals that have to endure uh, terrible pain and suffering uh, it is very difficult to give the answer for that one i think i think the nirvana uh, the stotram whatever i have given <clears throat> see that uh, the surviving okay that the moment again once again let me tell the phase of our life or a phase of every day we have the uh, three state of each and every one, which is a, a conscious state, which is say 18 hours in a day. And then the subconscious state, which is say six hours, I would say, or maybe very close to five hours. And the super conscious state, which is if we practice meditation, maybe half an hour, one hour in a day. In the state of uh, super conscious and, uh, and that one, the subconscious state, then there is no killing, nothing there. Okay. Only in the conscious state, we have this hatred, killing, or whatever, this 18 hours in a day. And <clears throat> therefore, uh, I think whoever has uh, this done something, some research on that, the life of Rishi Aravinda, okay, or the yogi, you know, that one was a very deepest yogi in this. And also Bhagavan Buddha, Lord Buddha, that the kind of, you know, that, that the enlightenment they had, I think they, they were in the state of super conscious state throughout the 24 hours and in their life we found that there was no killing or something for others even Bhagwan Buddha's life what I found he was even sacrificing his own life for one goat somebody was carrying a goat if you read the history of that one the story so he was sacrificing it is possible only when we evolve to a state of super conscious state for 24 hours in a day unless we evolve things will be going like this with the illusion Stealing others' property, killing, then lust, anger, ego, jealousy, all, all the negative points will be there because the 18 or 18 hours in the illusion state with the conscious state. Uh, there is a question from Kishore, and he asks Is lucid dreaming uh, related to spirituality? Illusion also a part of spirituality, of course. And the spirituality says that we have to come out from the illusion and to know our real self, that we are the blissful state forever and ever. Okay, and uh, we do not know on this dimension of the planet Earth whether it is feasible or possible. And but there is a journey uh, uh, continuous, there's a continuous journey, and maybe that there will be evolving state, then complete will be liberated each and every one with a blissful state. Uh, this is uh, the last question. Uh, this is from Prithi Das. Uh, mm -hmm. he asks if luck and fate are present, uh, is the theory of simulation true? Then, God is uh, in. Uh, uh, and he, I can't really understand what he's saying. Um, mm. Is God uh, beyond any criticism and does he control everything? I mean, he's asking about the theory of simulation and how mm. it is written. Actually, the sun is giving the light you know, for each and every one. Okay, and how we'll utilize. And there was a very good, uh, very good, you know, that uh, perception. Under the sunlight, maybe uh, I am giving a check to others and supporting and helping others. Even under the sunlight, I am cheating somebody with a check and giving the wrong check. It is not the it is not the flaw of the sunlight. It is a flaw of my own individual that if I do that one. So luck and those things. So it is it will definitely there. I do not know exactly, but the fact is that. Uh, the moment we connect ourselves, and if we have a, if we if we have the divinity within us, and if we evolve to a highest highest bit, and then there, of course, ultimately, you know that the, whatever all those luck and fate we say, it is only for we see that some physical success, definitely, some physical success. Fine. That means if we have some good property, house, car, bank balance, uh, and all those in good health. But the, if we just ask that, 
Okay, are you lucky enough to see realize that high supreme being? Okay, like I, I have seen certain uh, even scientists and even certain yogis also in Himalayan certain part. They do not have even a good house also, living in a very small, uh, I think I would say thatched house or this thing, but so happy in their mind. So uh, some external people with a materialistic view, they say how unlucky they are. They don't have a good house also. Okay, that judgment, that judgment comes. But they are evolved so, they are so evolved with the universe, they don't, don't even get a thatched house. That's the answer. So luck and those things are very relative actually. That is Anyway. Uh, this is the last question here. <laughs> this is the last question from Borsha Mukherjee. And after this, yeah. you know, if people have any comments or any right. query, they can type it in the uh, in the chat box or or in the comment section of the YouTube, and you can address them. Yeah. So yeah. this question is from Borsha Mukherjee. Can spirituality help us to motivate ourselves by strengthening our determination and actions to reach our goals of life? Or mm -hmm. is spirituality itself the final destination to be achieved? Yeah, actually, when when will become that a desireless personality? Okay, desireless personality is a very important talk. Desireless personality, then of course we'll be completely liberated. But it is a very difficult state to attain. And of course, spirituality will be giving you certain form that will become fearless. Like we have, you know, we have a we have a fear that we'll be losing our youth or we'll be dying some of that one or we are having emotional disbalance. So spirituality will give you in balance and harmony so that you can have a more better, uh, peaceful and happy life, individual happy life. And ultimately, once we you know, get that, that is called Paramarthik Anand. Okay, that is called absolute with the universe. Then that is the ultimate object of our, each and every one. Actually, we are that. In fact, actually, every individual are infinite. We are never born, we never die. We are thinking that we are born and we will die. <laughs> okay. That's the illusion. We are never born, we will never die. We are already in the universe for the, for, for the infinite course of time. So I guess uh, the rest of the questions, I, you could just address them uh, yes. later. Uh, yeah. Because this seems to be a never-ending sort of a never discussion. Ending, never ending discussion. Yes. So uh, I would request now uh, Mr. Mukherjee uh, to uh, uh, express his ideas as well as, you know, um, summarize the entire discourse. If you have any questions of if there is any discussion from your end uh, with regard to the lecture. So over to you, Mr. Mukherjee. Sir, I have a question that is related to the process of meditation because majority of us uh, do not know how to meditate because uh, whenever meditation is a thoughtless process, but mm -hmm. uh, whenever we go for meditation, lots of things, mm -hmm. lots of thoughts are will come into our mind and we can't be thoughtless. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what to do during meditation such that we should be completely thoughtless? Okay. It's a very practical question you have. Right? So once you start meditation, I think... Uh, Say first day, I would say if you start, there will be uh, first within second, some thought will come. Okay. And then you will see that within another few seconds, that thought will go, second thought will come. Then uh, within another few seconds, third thought will come. And it will continue. It will continue. Fine. So to start that one, the best way, when the first thought comes, you consider the first thought only. And don't allow your mind to go to the second thought. Understand? Suppose your thought is that that in Delhi you are you are in a grand palace. You are having a very high uh, dinner or lunch with your friends. You think on that. Yeah, I'm releasing the food. Think on that. Think on that. Think on that. And don't allow your mind to go to other. Just practice few days. Then you have a control. So your thought will be only one single point. Fine. Then once the, that thought will come to one single point, and then. If you do some breathing exercise or chant Om or whatever I would say, whatever the mantra, whatever is this one, then gradually find that that thought also will disappear, 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 and there is a come will the time there is a time will come when for only few seconds it never comes for a few hours, only few seconds there will be no thought, 
and that and that when there's no thought okay when absolutely vacuum and that enjoyment if you once get if you once get in your life that will be the at the highest and once a person gets that one then if he if if someone offers you some uh, several thousand crores of properties money this you will say no no i don't want this i don't want to bind my mind all those things because i have got this anand okay i got the highest anand so why should i waste my time and mind and energy for that so meditation is the process that first you start with the one thought that don't allow your mind to go maybe your first second third and after a few days or few months you will see the improvement this is and there are other postures to sit in the padmasana or this one sit for them and the thing of the early early morning is why is it is so important then this is there is a silence there on that time okay and once there is silence and everyone is in this world everyone is in the silence and gradually you will see that at uh, if you just wake up at 4:30 you sit for that one you see that at 5 o'clock some bird will say cue some sort of sound will come bird sound will come you can enjoy that one and gradually that if you concentrate with the sound of the bird okay or sound of the air or sound of the water then mind will be completely occupied with that sound so this way we move maybe one day i'll discuss with that on that uh, for the meditation thank how to thank you so much and thank you so much uh, professor bhomik and yeah. uh, i think it's about time that uh, we come to the end of this lecture now i would request uh, mr mukherjee to briefly uh, you know summarize the entire lecture as a sure. kind of conclusion so well, first of all uh, i am very thankful extremely thankful to professor bhomik for this wonderful session i think there is and i'm also the thankful to you that, that uh, professor uh, vivekananda mukherjee is having So, on behalf of Sizure Collective Society, we would like to thank you so much for, for this uh, lecture. Uh, Vivek Anand is here. Yes, uh, can you can you uh, summarize if your connection is? Yeah, am I audible right now? Yeah, you're audible. Yes. Okay. So, first of all, I am extremely thankful to you, sir, for this wonderful session. you have talked about the macroscopic world you have talked about the extraterrestrial body you have talked about the galaxies you you have told that only milky way is consists of you know billions of stars and we know the fraction of fraction part of the universe so you have told that how big the universe is and at the same time you have talked about the microscopic world we have talked about the brain cells that our brain is consist of billion of cells and how the billion of cells are connected and how how fast the communication is in between the those cells it's faster than the first first fastest or fastest computer super computer so and you have told i was extremely surprised when you have told that there is a absolute harmony between this macroscopic world and microscopic world and i have realized that is a, that is the basically point where we will be connecting spirituality with the science actually they are not very very different things so science is basically the knowing of nature the mini inner meaning of science is to know the nature and unfortunately we you know the fraction of fraction part of the nature so you have told so beautifully that the macroscopic world how the macroscopic world and microscopic world are so internally connected and we can understand this harmony with the process of meditation and you have also talked about the you know beauty of nature the symmetry of nature that how the nature is combined its element into a high symmetry and so why the nature is so beautiful nature is the one who has which is created by the everything in the universe is created by the nature you have also talked about about the time dilation which is a very important concept of relativity that if anything moves with a very high velocity if the frame of reference moves with a very high velocity the velocity which is comparable to the velocity of light then there is no meaning of time that time is dilated that yeah that is that was described by sri krishna the nice story you have told that 40 mm-hmm. years is compared with 30 seconds and that is nothing but the time dilation which was given by the theory of relativity you was you have described described the theory of relativity in a very elegant manner 
you have also told about the discovery of science you have told the discovery of electricity you have told about the discovery of different kind of gadgets and that is the way you have probably you have tried to indicate that how the maya involves more and more we involve in our physical world the maya plays a very important role will never will never be become free from the maya and you have uh, nicely interpreted what is maya is at the same time you have told about the super conscious state of our mind where the mind is completely free from the dimension of space and time the dimension of space of space and time was completely described by albert einstein where he has talked about that the time is time and space are not very much different thing which was explained by our sadhu sans billion almost 1000 years ago that you have told and i was really surprised to know about that you have also told talk, talked about you know samadhi state that where the people is completely free from this the foundation of space and time and this would be the probably the state where anything can be achieved you know i have heard some of the questions that students are very much you know very much excited about the time travel so apart up to the physics which what we have developed we can say that we can't go to the past but we don't know what is the possibility because science is all about the possibilities thousand years ago when we talk about the you know uh, somebody can fly in the sky everybody can laugh on you but now mm. it is the reality so nobody can talk about the future science is all about the possibilities and sir has told that spirituality is something which you can you can really feel those things with your inner consciousness and that is that is basically the super conscious state and super conscious state when you achieve that samadhi state you will be knowing everything about the universe you will be connecting everything in the universe all are connected at all all are, all are actually connected that you have to understand and that is a samadhi state and it is not easy to get that samadhi state you have a lots of practice or meditation and then only this kind of state can be achieved and uh, some of the students has asked about the process of life that how you can create life i could say that when i i have talked about my uncle who is a maharaj in ramkrishna mission when i had a conversation with him i came to know that he said that probably one day will come when the science will create life science will be able to create life some by some chemical reaction and the same thing has been told by bhumik sir that he has told that chaitanya is there in everywhere chaitanya is there in the stone chaitanya is there in the water chaitanya is there in everywhere that means life is everywhere the science is not able to discover it that means if the scientists able to create the life we can say the elements by which the life is created the life is already there on those elements so you are just connecting the life with the other with the other prospect of life so this is a wonderful session i must say that he has uh, professor bhomik sir has told you about the microscopic world macroscopic world how they are connected how we connect with the universe we are not the and when we talk about the microscopic and microscopic world at that time i have realized that how small i am compared to the universe universe is so big and compared to the universe we are nothing we have nothing to discuss about the future to discuss about the past we do not know the dimension of time we do not know anything about the universe okay we have we have already discovered fraction of fraction part of the universe so science is all about the as a student of science i could say is the things which are sounds impossible today might be it is the hardcore reality in future so with this i i make i can conclude my the discussion of professor bhomik sir and i'm grateful to professor joyita sen gupta for inviting me in this session thank you thank you so much mr bukherjee for wonderfully summarizing uh professor bomix lecture thanks to everyone who joined us today for your questions for your queries and this is a never ending discussion and i guess you know this uh, lecture by professor bomix will raise many questions many queries if you have still questions you can type it out there or you might if you want to get in touch with him personally i can uh, you know connect you all so thanks to everyone have a wonderful evening for the rest of what is left and a good night to all of you thank you so